top five TV moms of Generation X next on some Cereal for Dinner podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to some cereal for dinner. I'm your host Ian C. Today we're going to be talking about the top five moms of Generation X in my opinion, of course. So before we get to that video, let me just give you a reminder to like the channel, subscribe, or like, like this video, subscribe, hit that bell notification, share it on your favorite social media. If you've already done that, I just extend a, a, a great thanks to you. Thank you so much for doing that. It really means a lot. If you want to go that one extra step and donate some of your hard-earned cash during this time, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. We will provide a link to our Buy Me A Coffee page in the description below so that you can donate some funds to see us improve here on this channel. Again, I'm just dedicated to sharing with you the nostalgia of growing up Generation X, or maybe a little before, maybe a little beyond, but that's the basic idea of what we're doing here on this channel. So if you wanna see improvements to this show, see us grow as a channel, please do that. One last thing, and this is where I really need your guys' help. If you're a fan of this channel at all, I'm actually, you know that I've gone through a name change, change once. I was Cereal for Dinner, and then I realized that there was a podcast out there called Some Cereal, or called Cereal for Dinner, so I changed it from Cereal for Dinner to Some Cereal for Dinner podcast. I'm actually thinking of changing it again to Retro Cereal. Um, so I don't know if you, if you know, just leave a, a, a comment in the description below if you like it. One of the reasons I'm considering it is, again, for two reasons. There is a, a channel called Cereal for Dinner. Uh, there was a podcast. They haven't done anything on in a long time, and I changed it, but I don't know if I've changed it enough to not do any copyrights or anything like that, and I certainly don't want to get sued or anything like that. The other thing is, is I've been encouraged by watching other YouTube videos that tell you how to grow your channel, and one of the things you have to do is you have to make it clear what your channel does, and cereal for dinner kind of doesn't really make it clear as to what this channel is about. It's about nostalgia, uh, particularly around growing up Generation X, and retro, particularly growing up around Generation X. And so uh, I was thinking of changing it to Retro Cereal uh, and the Retro Cereal podcast. If you like that idea, please let me know if you want me to keep it the way it is. All your comments will be evaluated, uh, and it would really mean a lot to me. So now, let's talk about it. Generation X, the top five TV moms, at least the top five TV moms, in my own humble personal opinion. We're going to start with number five, and we're going to go down to the first one. Now, the first one, actually the first two, are going to be a little bit controversial as to whether or not they should be considered TV moms or TV moms of Generation X and for different reasons on both of them, and we'll get to those in due course. But the first one I wanna talk about, the top five TV moms coming in at number five yeah. is Carol Brady from The Brady Bunch, played by Florence Henderson, also played by Shelley Long in the movies. Now, I include Shelley Long because I'm actually talking about the character Carol Brady and not necessarily the actress uh, Florence Henderson or the actress Shelley Long. I'm actually talking about the character Carol Brady. Uh, and because I'm talking about, you know, the TV moms of Generation X. Now, I know that there are going to be some people out there who are going to say, yes, Ian, but we really, you know, she wasn't really technically part of Generation X, maybe a little bit before. Well, let me just remind you that the show ran from 1969 to 1974. So let me just put that in its favor. And if you are born in 64, you are considered to be a uh, part of Generation X. Um, also, so yes, I mean, it would be early Generation X, 
But if you go to 1974, that puts you squarely in Generation X. And let me just say that, uh, that as I was growing up, it was an influence on me because although I was watching it kind of in reruns, it was still a big influence on me and she was still a big influence on me as a television mother. I remember in one particular episode, and this is really uh, a heartwarming situation, where the youngest Brady, Bobby Brady, was having a hard time and, and the character Carol Brady was comforting this young child. And... Bobby said, you know, you care about me even though I'm a step. And this was a time of blended families, divorces, and things like that, and coming together. And she looked down at him and said, the only steps in this house are those steps over there that, you know, she pointed the place that goes upstairs. So she really tried to bring some comfort as a mother to these children, particularly the three who had lost their mother. They weren't divorced, but it was a blended family due to being a widow and a widower, as you know. Uh, and so Carol Brady brings it in for me because even though it would have been at the very beginning of Generation X, it does overlap into Generation X and it was pivotal to those of us who grew up Generation X. So with that controversy kind of aside, I just have to say she was very influential to me as far as a TV mother is concerned. Number four, coming in at number four is Mrs. Garrett, or Edna Garrett. And this might be a little controversial as I've, as, as I've titled this video, uh, you know, TV moms of Generation X, and technically she wasn't a mother, but she acted like a mother. She acted like a mother to those, those girls who were uh, in, in, uh, in boarding school. Uh, and, and she also acted like a mother, as you recall, to two boys who lost their mother, uh, Willis and Arnold, from different strokes. So Mrs. Garrett, uh, a mother to a lot of people, even though she didn't have children herself, she was a mother figure. And so I think that deserves, and then also she was influence, influential on me. And so I think that deserves a, a, a billing in TV Moms of Generation X. Unfortunately, we lost the actress who played her in uh, 2018, but her her motherly advice and her wisdom will live on in reruns of both Different Strokes and, and the at facts. number three is Peggy Bundy from Married with Children. Married with Children ran from 1987 to 1997. The part was played by Katie Segal, and she did an amazing job. And if you know the backdrop of Married with Children, it was supposed to be the anti-Huxtables. Fox had just come out and was trying to compete as a major uh, television network. And so what they wanted to do is collect a handful of shows that were really good, but were really different from everything else that was coming out at the time. And boy, did they succeed with Married with Children. And, Kay, and, and, and Peggy Bundy was no exception to that exception. She was anything but the TV moms that came before. She was anything but all those nice and wholesome family kind of things. She didn't mind um, being very sarcastic toward her husband and very sarcastic towards her children and to, towards the family unit in general. But as you could tell, there was also a deep and abiding concern for her entire family. While it was okay for her to kind of play this little verbal sparring match with her kids and with her husband. It wasn't okay for other people. That was inside the family and she was very protective of her children and her relationship with her husband. And so for that, I think that earns her uh, 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 a place in the TV moms of Generation X. And let me just say that there was a lot of places where, and I know a lot of people, not just me, identified with that family. Of course, there were some Ex, uh, uh, exaggerated ideas or exaggerated, you know, exaggerated uh, features of that family. But there were a lot of us out there who said, yeah, our family is actually a little bit more like this than it is like, you know, the Huxtables or it is like 
uh, growing pains or it is like you know these other TV families and a lot of us kind of straddled in both worlds you know there were elements of our family that was like the Huxtables and there were elements of our family that was like uh, married with children and so for that again I think she deserves a, a listing on uh, Generation X TV moms I don't think you can think of Generation X TV moms without thinking of Peggy Bundy in some respects all right, the next one, number two runner-up, is Claire Huxtable, played on The Cosby Show from 1984 to 1992. Claire Huxtable was the quintessential mother. She was smart. She was a go-getter. She had her family unit in order, and she had a very great job as well. She was an attorney, as you recall, but it didn't seem to interfere at all with her motherly abilities. As a matter of fact, she maintained the balance of being a mother and having such an extraordinary job as well. And it was really nice to see that, that balance. Uh, in her character. She was stern as a mother and she was loving as a mother well. As a matter of fact, I think the word balance really could apply to that character. There really wasn't any types of outrageous kind of um, problems that you saw with her uh, as that mother figure or even as that wife figure. She played the part beautifully as this television mom. She was able to be the wife to her husband that she needed to be and also be the mother to her children that she needed to be and express the right amount of discipline as well as the right amount of love. You knew where the boundaries were when it came to her. You knew where the lines were when it came to her. And you knew that if you crossed those lines, well, yes, there would be hell to pay but you knew that you weren't going to lose her love as a mother. And for that, she ranks actually number two on my influence as TV mothers. I just absolutely loved that character. Number one is Elise Keaton from Family Ties. Family Ties ran from 1982 to 1989. That's my top number one favorite pick is Elise Keaton from Family Ties, Ties, played by Meredith Baxter. Used to be Meredith Baxter Bernie, but now it's simply Meredith Baxter. She was my favorite TV mom, and she was my favorite TV mom for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, let me just be a little autobiographical here. I think that out of all the television mothers out there, I saw my relationship with my mother most reflected in her relationship between um, Elise Keaton and Alex P. Keaton. I, I just I identified with that. Now, I was not anything like Alex P. Keaton. Alex P. Keaton was a geek. He was really good at school. But the connection that those two had, I really found a, a reflection in my own in my own relationship with my mother, uh, unlike anything, uh, unlike any other um, relationships between mother and son out there. The other thing that I think was interesting uh, is that I think almost the entire show, and of course, I could be coming at this fairly autobiographical. I don't know. But it seemed like the entire reflection, uh, that the entire show really was boiled down to that relationship, the relationship between uh, Al Alex P. Keaton and Elise Keaton. And that there, of course, there was other, you know, uh, intense stories. There was other really uh, involved plots. There was other uh, really important relationships. But for the most part, I could say that for me, it boiled down to that relationship, the relationship between the mother and the son. And as you know, if you're a devotee, I grew up for the most part uh, with a single mother. And so I could be looking at, that, at this through skewed glasses to some degree, but I saw that as, um, uh, as, uh, as a main theme of that show, that there was this relationship between the two that um, 
uh, that seemed to reflect my own relationship and that the television show really revolved around that relationship itself. The other thing that I liked about the show and, uh, and that why I put it ahead of the Cosby show or ahead of Claire Huxtable is due to the fact that they didn't seem to have it all together. They, uh, they weren't completely inept as parents and she wasn't completely inept as a mother, but it did seem like she was learning just as much about how to be a mom uh, as, uh, as, you know, as, she, as her character developed and as she moved along. So she seemed to be uh, learning at, as the show grew and as situations came up. It wasn't like she had it all together and knew exactly what to do. This was a little bit unlike Claire Huxtable, where, as I just mentioned, she knew what to do. You know, it, it was almost like she had this thing, this motherhood thing down packed, where Elise was trying to uh, learn what to do to some degree. It almost seemed like she had a pattern of knowledge in which she, she could draw from but each unique situation between her and her children and her husband seemed to present its own challenges in which she had to figure it out at the time. So she earns my number one spot for uh, Mothers of Generation X, TV Mothers of Generation X. All right, so that's it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there somebody I should have mentioned that I didn't mention? course when you're doing a video like this there are a lot of things in my mind that I think about that uh, I think boy I'm wondering if people are gonna mention that or should I have mentioned this person but again this is just from my own perspective so let me know if there's anybody I should have missed what's your top five and please once again make sure that you like comment subscribe share this on your favorite favorite social media it would mean so much to me Go to the link below, do that buy me a coffee thing. Uh, if you want to see the show improve, you know, uh, subscribe means a lot to me. And also the other thing is, is give me your feedback. Should I change the show to Retro Serial and let people know a little bit more about what's going on on the channel? And then that way we can bring more viewership into this channel right now. So I'm dedicated to growing this channel. And uh, if you're dedicated to me as a fan, please do, you know, let me know and share these things on your favorite social media and do all that other stuff I already asked for a dozen times. I don't mean to sound like I'm begging. So thank you so much. And we will see you again on another episode of Serial for Dinner podcast.